So this is the video I've had tumbling in my mind for a while. It's really different from any of my other videos. It's less factual. It comes from the heart and it's more of an opinion piece. And in the wise words of Joey Tribbiani, my opinion is moo. It's like a cow's opinion. It, it doesn't matter. It's moo. I bring this up with my students all the time. And that's photography. It is quite possibly the single most influential factor that got me to where I am today. Had my parents never got me an old Canon PowerShot A540, I'm not sure I'd be sitting here in front of you today. And my bank account wouldn't be sad to look at. Yeah. Photography can and will drastically improve the quality of your 3D work. Now you might think, what the crap does photography have anything to do with 3D art? Regardless of the industry we work in, whether it's film, games, archfiz, advertising, whatever, at the end of the day, when we break down our work to its simplest form, we're trying to create beautiful images. We try to mimic reality. We observe references. We try to model the objects we see in everyday life. Photography requires a solid understanding of composition, your subject, but so does 3D art. Every single 3D app, Unreal, Maya, Blender, 3ds Max, you're always setting up and working with a the camera there. It really isn't much different than snapping a photo with a real camera. Focal length, aperture, shutter speed, motion blur, frame rate, 3D cameras and real cameras are the same. So understanding where those fancy photographic terms come from will help you understand what the heck you're doing in 3D. And with a real camera in your hand, you're going to start paying attention to the things you may never have noticed before. The balance of shadows and highlights, texture detail, the way light reflects off a given object, that the field, golden hour, blue hour, these are all things that are critical to understanding as a 3D artist. You're going to start developing your eye for these things, and that is what slowly but surely will make you stand out from all the rest. Photography gives you the unique opportunity to observe, analyze, and capture those incredible moments. Another benefit is that photography also gets my lazy butt out of the office and into the world, out in nature, in the fresh air of the mountains. It allows me to take a break, all while learning and practicing something that is directly relevant to 3D art. Photography complements your 3D work in a wonderful way because sometimes stepping away from ZBrush or Unreal is the best thing you can do for your art. Spending hours and days and weeks in front of a screen can only help you so much. A good break away from all of that will help you recharge your batteries. It'll force you to take a step back and see things with a fresh pair of eyes. Going out to shoot photos is a wonderful way to take that break, all while simultaneously training that artistic eye, which will help your 3D work. It is a win-win. Think of it as an athlete who trains at the gym to be better at their sport. A hockey player doing deadlift to train them muscles and perform better in the playoffs. Photography is my form of working out. It is training my eye, it forces me to pay attention, focus on how the real world looks, and help me implement that into my own renders, regardless of whether I'm working in Unreal, Maya, or Blender. What makes photography such a useful skill to know is that you'll learn how to properly edit and color grade your photos. I've talked about this a little bit in my Making Unreal More Cinematic video right here, where I highlight the importance of color grading. Taking photos, shooting in RAW, and editing them will help you understand how far you can push an image to completely change the mood and tone and feel of a shot. That is a classic example of how photography will directly improve your work as a 3D artist. Now, what about gear? I love holding a quality camera in my hand, but you don't need to go out and spend two or three, four thousand dollars on a new camera. The brands don't really matter much nowadays either. Whether it's Nikon, Sony, Canon, they're all pretty much on par with each other at this point in time. I like to say that gear doesn't matter, and I think most photographers will agree, but at the same time, gear does matter, but not for the reason you think. A camera with more megapixels or bigger lens is not going to improve your photography. The reason I say gear matters is because I just don't get inspired or excited by holding a smartphone in my hand. Phones take amazing photos nowadays, don't get me wrong, 
but this is not going to inspire me to go out and shoot. But my trusty 10-year-old Nikon D800, however, <laughs> just holding this baby in my hand gets me pumped. I love the way it feels. I love the sound of the shutter. I love the satisfying mechanical clack of the mirror. Gear matters if that is what it takes to get you out of your door and into the world. It's all about where your camera takes you. This camera right here made me quit my job twice and got me backpacking across Europe for a year. It ended up making me live in Iceland, Ireland, and Norway. Would a smartphone have inspired me to do all that? Probably not. Conversely, you could have a colossally huge, amazing $10,000 telephoto lens, but if the sheer size and weight of that lens holds you back from carrying it around with you, you just won't be going out to shoot more photos. Just use whatever it takes to get you outdoors. Now this naturally segues into this video sponsor, Skillshare. Photography is a new skill you will have to learn, and it is pretty daunting when you have to set that camera of yours to manual for the first time. Fortunately, Skillshare is the perfect platform to learn how to operate your camera. Here, you're going to find a plethora of high quality classes to learn every aspect of photography, from how to use your camera, to composition, color grading, Skillshare has it all. You can learn all about the fundamentals of photography with Justin Bridges. I myself am looking at Oliver Astrologos' class on video editing and resolve because I'm hoping it's going to help speed up my workflow, which in turn will help me make more videos for you faster. Skillshare's classes are curated, they're ad-free, new premium classes come out every single week, and it's worth mentioning that the entire catalog of classes now offers subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. So the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down below will get a one month free trial so you can grab a camera and start shooting pictures right away. So pause this video and go do that right now. Go out and shoot. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So here are a few camera recommendations that may seem expensive for a beginner, but they are advanced enough that they will give you plenty of room to grow as a photographer and you're not going to feel like they're holding you back after a few months of using them. So with Nikon, you can try the Z50, the Z6, or the Z62, Sony's A6600, the A7C, or the A7 IV, the Canon EOS R or R6, Panasonic's GH4 or GH5, and finally, the Fuji X-T3 or the X-T4. You really can't go wrong with any of these. It all boils down to budget and personal preference. If anyone tells you that Sony is better than Canon, they're lying to you. Photography is an expensive hobby. Seriously, if I wasn't into this, I would have the fattest wallet, but you do absolutely get what you pay for. I've included affiliate links for all the cameras mentioned here down below if you want to give any of these a try. Again, all of this is just an opinion piece, but it's one that I 100% stand behind. I'm convinced that I wouldn't be the artist I am today if it weren't for this camera. I hope I'm able to convey the joy and passion I feel toward taking photos because it's a beautiful art form and your 3D art will improve as a result. I promise. So thank you so much for watching everyone. If you found this video helpful, give it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing. And as always folks, happy rendering.